Has a snake ever coiled itself round any part of your body? A full-blooded cobra. All of us fell silent. The question came from the homeopath. The topic came up when we were discussing snakes. We listened attentively as the doctor continued with the tale. It was a hot summer night about 10 o'clock. I had my meal at the restaurant and returned to my room. I heard a noise from Abu as I opened the door. The sound was a familiar one. One could say that Rats and I shared the room. I took out my box of matches and lighted the kerosene lamp on the table. The house was not electrified. It was a small rented room. I had just set up medical practice and earnings were meager. I had about 60 rupees in my suitcase, along with some shirts and dhotis. I also possessed one solitary black coat, which I was then wearing. I took off my black coat, white shirt and not so white vest and hung them up. I opened the two windows in the room. It was an outer room with a one wall facing the open yard. It has a tiled roof with a long supporting gable that rested on the beam over the wall. There was no ceiling. There was a regular traffic of rats to and from the beam. I made my bed and pulled it close to the wall. I lay down but I could not sleep. I got up and went out to the veranda for a little air. But the wind god seemed to have taken time off. I went back into the room and sat down on the chair. I opened the box beneath the table and took out a book, the material medica. I opened it at the table on which stood the lamp and a, a large mirror. A small comb lay beside the mirror. One feels tempted to look into a mirror when it is near. I took a look. In those days, I was a great admirer of beauty and I believed in making myself look handsome. I was unmarried and was a doctor. I felt I had to make my presence felt. I picked up the comb and ran it through my hair and adjusted the parting so that it looked straight and neat. Again, I heard that sound from Abu. I took a close look at my face in the mirror. I made an important decision. I shave daily and grow a thin moustache to look more handsome. I was, after all, a bachelor and a, a doctor. I looked into the mirror and smiled. It was an attractive smile. I made another earth-shaking decision. I would always keep the attractive smile on my face to look more handsome. I was after all a bachelor and doctor too, top of it. Again came that noise from Abu. I got up, lit a beady and paced up and down the room. Then another lovely thought struck me. I would marry. I would get married to a woman doctor who had plenty of money and a good medical practice. She had to be fat for a valid reason. If I made some silly mistake and need to run away, she should not be able to run after me and catch me. With uh, such thoughts in my mind, I resumed my seat in the chair in front of the table. There were no more sounds from Abu. Suddenly, there came a dull thud as if a rubber tube had fallen to the ground. Surely nothing to worry about. Even so, I thought I would turn around and take a look. No sooner had I returned than a fat snake wriggled over the back of the chair and landed on my shoulder. The snakes landing on me and my turning were simultaneous. I didn't jump. I didn't tremble. 
I didn't cry out. There was no time to do any such thing. The snake slithered along my shoulder and coiled around my left arm above the elbow. The hood was spread out and its head was hardly three or four inches from my face. I felt then the great presence of the creator of this world and this universe. God was there. Suppose I said something and he did not like it. I tried in my imagination to write in bright letters outside my little heart the words, O oh God. There was some pain in my left arm. It was as if a thick laden rod, no, a rod made of molten fire, was slowly but powerfully crushing my arm. The arm was beginning to be drained of all strength. What could I do? At my slightest movement, the snake would strike me. Death locked four inches away. Suppose it struck. What was the medicine I had to take? There were no medicines in the room. I was but a poor, foolish and stupid doctor. I forgot my danger and smiled feebly at myself. It seemed as if God appreciated that the snake turned its head. It looked into the mirror and saw it reflection. I do not claim that it was the fastest snake that had ever looked into a mirror. But it was certain that the snake was looking into the mirror. Was it admiring its own beauty? Was it trying to make an important decision about growing a moustache or using eyeshadow and mascara or wearing a vermilion spot on its forehead? I didn't know anything for certain. What sex was the snake? Was it male or female? I will never know. For the snake unwound itself from my arm and slowly slithered into my lap. From there, it crept into the table and moved towards the mirror. Perhaps it wanted to enjoy its reflection at closer quarters. I was no mere image cut in granite. I was suddenly a man of flesh and blood. Still holding my breath, I got up from the chair. I quietly went out through the door into the veranda. From there, I leapt into the yard and ran for all I was worth. Phew! Each of us heaved a sigh of relief. All of us lit beadies. Somebody asked, Doctor, is your wife very fat? No, the doctor said. God willed otherwise. My life companion is a thin, reedy person with the gift of a sprinter. Someone else asked, Doctor, when you ran, did the snake follow you? The doctor replied, I ran and ran till I reached a friend's house. Immediately I smeared oil all over myself and took a bath. I changed into fresh clothes. The next morning at about 8.30, I took my friend and one or two others to my room to move my things from there. But we found we had little to carry. Some thief had removed most of my things. The room had been cleaned out, but not really. The thief had left behind one thing as a final insult. What was that? I asked. The doctor said, my vest, the dirty one. The fellow had such a sense of cleanliness. The rascal could have taken it and used it after washing it with the soap and water. Did you see the snake the next day, doctor? The doctor laughed. I have never seen it since. It was a snake which was taken with its own beauty. About the author Vaiko Muhammad Bashir, 21st January 1908, 5th July 1994, was a Malayalam fiction writer from the state of Kerala in India. He was a humanist, freedom fighter, novelist and short story writer. He is noted for his down-to-earth style of writing that made him equally popular among literary critics as well as the common man. 
He is regarded as one of the most successful and outstanding writers from India. Translations of his works into other languages have won him worldwide acclaim. The story, The Snake and the Mirror, Balya Kalasaki, Sabdangal, Mithulukal, and Anarga Nimisham. He was awarded the Padma Sri in 1982. He is fondly remembered as the Beipur Sultan. Little Bobby came into the kitchen where his mother was making dinner. His birthday was coming up and he thought this was a good time to tell his mother what he wanted. Mom, I want a bike for my birthday. Little Bobby was a bit of a troublemaker. He had gotten into trouble at school and at home. Bobby's mother asked him if he thought he deserved to get a bike for his birthday. Little Bobby, of course, thought he did. Bobby's mother wanted Bobby to reflect on his behavior over the last year and said, Go to your room, Bobby, and think about how you have behaved this year. Then write a letter to God and tell him why you deserve a bike for your birthday. Little Bobby stumped up the steps to his room. Jesse, his pet dog, followed him. Bobby thought for some time and sat down to write a letter to God. Jesse sat beside him and started watching what Bobby was doing. Letter 1. Dear God, I have been a very good boy this year and I would like a bike for my birthday. I want a red one, your friend Bobby. Bobby knew that this wasn't true. He had not been a very good boy this year. So he tore up the letter and started again to write another letter. Letter 2. Dear God, this is your friend Bobby. I have been a good boy this year and I would like a red bike for my birthday. Thank you, your friend Bobby. Bobby knew that this wasn't true either. So he tore up the letter and started again. Letter 3. Dear God, I have been an okay boy this year. I still would really like a bike for my birthday. Bobby. Bobby knew he could not send this letter to God either. So Bobby wrote the fourth letter. Letter 4. God. I know I haven't been a good boy this year. I'm very sorry. I will be a good boy if you just send me a bike for my birthday. Please, thank you, Bobby. Bobby knew even if it was true, this letter was not going to get him a bike. Now, Bobby was very upset. He went downstairs and told his mom that he wanted to go to church. Bobby's mother thought that her plan had worked. As Bobby looked very sad, just be home in time for dinner, Bobby's mother told him. Bobby walked down the street to the church on the corner. Little Bobby went into the church and up to the altar. He looked around to see if anyone was there. Bobby bent down and picked up a small statue of Mary, the mother of God. He slipped the statue under his shirt and ran out of the church, down the street, into the house and up to his room. He shut the door of his room and sat down with a piece of paper and pen. Bobby began to write his letter to God. Letter 5 God, I have kidnapped your mom. If you want to see her again, send the bike, Bobby. Story is written by Richta Rao.